All right. Hey, Vikings fans. Welcome in to another episode of the Skull Hop. I'm Evan. And I'm Austin. And we're just a couple of dudes from Iowa. We like drinking beer and talking about the Vikings. Yeah, we do. And tonight is episode 60, which is awesome. Feels like a really cool milestone. Uh, I can't believe we've been doing it this long. And here's to another 60 and beyond. But... For tonight, we try a new, new to us brewery, uh, one that neither of us had ever tried before, and I think I think we both liked it pretty good. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, unfortunately for me, I <laughs> was the victim of the Wheel of Purple punishments. Uh, you had correctly picked the Vikings would win against the Packers, and I had predicted preseason that they would lose. So I was the victim of the wheel, so you'll get to experience my punishment. <laughs> uh, compliments of the wheel, so that was fun. Yeah, yeah. And after that, we recap the pa- the win against the Packers and hopefully the upcoming win in London against the Jets this week. And you kind of posed another question to me, similar to what you did last week. But we continue kind of this conversation about Sam Darnold and what do the Vikings do after this season with this quarterback, Sam Darnold, if he continues to play the way that he has. It was a it was a tough question and I, I kinda struggled to answer it. Yeah. So it'll and be interesting to see for sure what happens. For sure. And in some ways I kinda hope it keeps being a tough question. But all that to say for tonight, grab a cold one, join us for episode sixty, and uh, we'll get going from there. It's cool. cool. As we get started here, we just gotta we gotta pay the bills. So let's give a big thanks and big shout out to uh, show presenting sponsor, Big Top Ventures. Uh, if you're looking to take an all inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica anytime soon or in the near future, uh, go ahead and we'll put it up on the screen as always. Send an email to Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com uh, and just let them know kind of what you're thinking. Even if you're not too sure, they will help you out uh, and they will get you the best price possible on an all-inclusive in mexico or jamaica and it's just as easy as that thanks big top ventures yeah thanks guys well you know what time it is i know i'm so excited for this one i was just telling you i felt (sighs) bad because you're the only one that has to spin the wheel of purple punishments yes but now that it's like here i'm I'm kind of excited (laughs) (laughs) i just want to get it over with i don't want to have to eat jalapenos or do the cinnamon challenge or anything crazy like that i will cheer you on i can like a blindfold i'll deal with it sitting in a child's chair i'll deal with it um (laughs) what else (laughs) taking a shot of apple cider vinegar i can deal with that that might not be too bad actually so here we go well hold on should we preface this really quick oh yeah uh we are about to do the our segment called purple punishments where we made our preseason picks uh i forget which episode 50 one or something like that back a handful of episodes we made game by game preseason picks and the the segment is if either of us get those picks wrong then whoever got that wrong would have to spin the wheel of purple punishments and do whatever the wheel says and so far the two times we've spun the wheel we've both been wrong and so we've both had to suffer the punishments yeah Uh, now this week you picked the vikings to beat the packers because I believe. Did. And I picked them to lose to the Packers. <laughs> so here we are. There's the context. We're going to spin and it. And it's just right here. Here we go. I'm so excited. All the sound effect. Take a shot right. of apple cider vinegar. I oh, can, man. I can deal I feel with like that. you got you got off easy this time. I can deal with that. You're not going to love it, but... <laughs> well, but. it's a good thing I texted you earlier because I told you, I said, we should get some Vikings shot glasses if we're going to have to do that one. Yep. And you delivered. So yeah. it's actually closer to you. Okay. We've got a little pantry going on back here and a whole bunch of groceries. So... This will be interesting. Oh, man. This is genuine apple cider vinegar. And this is... You bought a lot of apple cider vinegar. Well, I just went to the dollar store yeah, and just, like, go. went off of our list. Do you want to do the honors of you pouring it? you want me it? to pour it? Yeah. Okay. Over the the equipment that we have here. All I right. trust you. All right. Ooh. You're not the one that has to do it. That's so true. I'd... We'll give you the honors of pouring it up. It looks kind of like beer. This is a... This is a decent-sized shot glass. I know. I picked the bigger one on purpose. Okay. All right. I'm not afraid. There we go. 
All right. You should hold it up. Let the viewers see. I filled it mostly the way. That's probably more than an ounce or two. I don't know. But well, this is what I get <laughs> for picking against the Vikings. You should not do that. You uh, should not well, do that anymore. I can't go back. I, I mean... I picked him. I think I picked him to win eight games this year. So this could be a long season well, if they continue on the trend that they're on. That's true. We only we only spin it if we're wrong about it, not if they lose. Right. So right. Well. All right. Bottoms up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. How was it, man? That burns. Yeah. <laughs> that burns. It's I'm also, so glad I didn't have to do that. It's like it's sour, so it's oh, like yeah. it just makes you pucker. Your your eyes are watering pretty good right now. You're putting up a good fight, but man, that Ooh. I can tell. <laughs> well, here's the deal. It was about 30 seconds worth of punishment, and now we get now to enjoy done. some beer. Now you don't have to wear socks on your hands or do push-ups every time you say Vikings. So that's why I said of everything, yeah. you probably got off pretty easy. Thank you. Thank you, Will, for <laughs> for taking it easy on me. I appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, we do have some beer here. Yeah, we do. And I'm ready to get into it because I need to get this taste out of my mouth. <laughs> um, we were approached by Jeff from Titanka Brewing yeah. Company. Thanks, Jeff. North Central Iowa. And uh, he wanted to send us some beer. And You're of still course, fighting it a little bit, aren't I you? I know. I'm, I'm pushing through. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, Jeff from Titanka. He, he offered to send us some beer. Yeah. And he didn't just send us some beer. He sent us a whole lot of beer. Yeah. <laughs> and two episodes worth, yeah, pretty so, much. So we're hoping to try two of Titanka's beers tonight, and then we'll save two Sometime for... Sometime in a future episode. Yeah. yeah, in the next couple of weeks or so. So thank you, Jeff, from Titanka Brewing. We're mm-hmm. excited to try these beers. And I'm excited to try this one. Um we picked this uh, Rooster Tails Red Ale yeah. to start with. Yeah, it looks uh, the can art looks really good. All of their their can art has that really cool, like fresh, clean, like simple modern look to it. Uh, obviously, can art doesn't really traditionally mean anything towards how the beer tastes. I don't believe I've ever had any Titanka brewing beers. Do you know if you have? I have not either. In fact, I hadn't heard of them until you told me that they reached out to us yeah. and wanted to send us some beer. And I'm like, all right, yeah, as so long I'm, as they're from Iowa, let's do it. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to try these out, um, especially since after this, we have what, three more kinds of beers to try. Uh, we'll try two tonight, this Rooster Tails Red Ale. And then about midway through the episode, we're gonna we're gonna try the second of the two we're gonna have tonight, which is their middle of nowhere any IPA. So uh, I'm really excited about both of them, but we're starting off with the red ale first. All right, let's crack them open, pour them up. How's the the apple cider it's, vinegar? Sitting? It's settled down a little bit, but the aftertaste is still like stuck yep. in the back of my throat. So I'm ready for something else. I'm ready to get I'm a palate cleanse. I'm wondering how they're going to mix the beer It'll be interesting. And the, the apple cider vinegar. I do have a bottle of water here, so I might <laughs> uh, take a quick chug of my water. All right. So first impressions, pouring the beer. Oh, man, I hope Holy this doesn't overflow. Yeah, um, you... It's definitely a red ale. It, it's got a yeah. nice light red flavor or red color to it. Uh, pretty good head retention. Um, I am in it. Wash and, this out with some water quick. Yeah. Again, a nice light aroma as well. So not anything extreme. I feel like the last handful of beers we've had on the on the show have been solid beers beers. Um, again, other than the Caramel Apple Fandango. Uh, so this kind of gives me vibes that it's going to be another one of those solid beers beers. Um, and yeah, I'm really impressed with the way this is looking so far. Yeah. I'm going to let it die down just a second because I do hard pours. So it takes me a second. It's not super transparent either. So that means it's got a little little body to it, I think. It's so nice to grab a beer and not have a sock on my hand like we did last <laughs> week. <laughs> it, was, it was nice to not have to crack oh, a beer yeah. that was so with a hard. sock on your hand, too. <laughs> and than, use two hands to <laughs> carefully pour it in. Everything you said, I was about to say, other than the heat, the cracking it open was the hardest part. But no, I think it was the two-hand pour. I don't know. Either way. I think I'm ready to get going. Let's uh, try the rooster. The rooster tails. Rooster tails red ale. Skull. Skull. Mm, yes that's wonderful okay the, the multi flavor is really strong yeah which i like um that's a good characteristic of anything in that category 
Um, and it's the perfect way to wash that <laughs> apple <laughs> cider vinegar your taste yeah. out. So, yeah, I like it a lot. I, I'm almost getting kind of like a tangy vibe from it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's definitely malty in the red ale, mm-hmm. but it's not it's not all the way into like a dark amber i i don't know i like it it's um it's got a flavor i wasn't expecting and i'm definitely here for it it's it's kind of a tangy i I can't think of a better word to describe it other than that the apple cider vinegar may be you know messing with your taste buds a little bit um but yeah i like it one one good sip in and i'm i wish we had 10 or 12 more of these things because this is delicious they're super good and four and a half percent so oh yeah 10 pretty, or 12 yeah. pretty easy going mm-hmm. i probably wouldn't do 10 or 12 but <laughs> nah, yeah we'd get we full could, before that we could go for a few yeah for sure oh, yeah. and be just fine so so far jeff uh titanka you're one for one on delicious beers uh, i'm ready to try the other ones honestly yeah all right well Let's uh, let's talk football. How? What do you What do you mean? Is there anything we even can talk about? Like, <laughs> we're just Vikings fans. It's not very exciting, is it? Well, the Vikings are four and zero. What? No so, way. <laughs> yes, it was a an odd game to watch. It was definitely tale of two halves. Absolutely, the definition of tale of two halves. But I feel like there were a couple other games between college and NFL that had similar things happen. Not quite mm. to the Vikings extreme. Um, it got hairy there. It, it definitely, my heart was pumping towards the end. Um, but it's okay because the first part of the game, really most of the first half, um, up until that punt return that was muffed uh, and then returned, recovered by the, the Packers, before then, the Vikings could do no wrong. Absolutely no wrong. Um, there was a couple of calls i thought the refs overall had a pretty rough day because yeah, agreed even in texting you like there was even a couple of times that you said like oh no that definitely should be called the vikings way we were kind of arguing yeah, yeah <laughs> like I, I saw it one way you saw it a different way yeah and i i feel like the refs definitely could have done better uh, there were i mean most of the crazy blatant ones like you can't really whine about the refs too much but even some of the calls that went the vikings way i was thinking like man i don't i don't really know i i don't see that i see that going the other way i think there was a touchdown no it was the play that the packer caught the ball had possession his feet were in the end zone so he had possession of Mm -hmm. the football while he was located in the end zone yes the ball was technically not in the end zone but that shouldn't matter he was in the end zone they called it not a touchdown and i thought that should have been a touchdown for the packers I'm not an expert. I'm not an NFL referee. Maybe that's just me not knowing every part of the rule. But even now, like, I still kind of weirded out. I think that should have been called a touchdown. They they also brought Gene Steratore on the broadcast a few times, the rules analyst. Mm -hmm. And there was that play. And then there was also the play, I think it was in the third or fourth quarter, and it was an interception. And the Packers defensive back... Uh, looked like maybe he bobbled it yeah. and maybe he didn't survive the ground, mm-hmm. which if you're a receiver, that's definitely... Th- I feel like had he been a wide receiver and not a defensive back, they would have looked at that more closely, but they didn't, and they ruled it an interception even though it shouldn't have been. And Gene Steratore even said that's not an interception. Yeah, that was another one. And granted, that was one that went against the Vikings, so of course we're going to sound like homers or whatever. Right. Which we are. We're... we're you know pure blood homers for the vikings that's there's there's no question about it but that one specifically still i can't i would need a very slow and detailed explanation as if i'm a five-year-old for me to try to understand why that was actually an interception because he was definitely bobbling it i've been on this podcast many times and even still now i'll definitely say the referees more often than not overall do a fantastic job and i know that's most people are like no refs are terrible they don't know what they're seeing most of the time they make the right call in real time and even like in real time it might seem plain as day to go the other way but then you see it in slow motion it's like oh yeah i guess his toe was barely just out of bounds or something like that Mm -hmm. and these refs most of the time get the call right right away uh so i i genuinely usually believe in the refs that game could have been called a little bit differently however i don't think the refs gave the the comeback to the packers other than that interception which could have been huge i I think the packers really did figure stuff out and they did turn it around and they made it a heck of a game they sure did yeah and uh 
I don't know. It's hard to, for me. It's hard to fault the refs um, because the game happened so quickly, and you got a lot of talented players on both sides mm-hmm. of the ball in that game. I don't know. Um, there were definitely a lot of questionable things. Um, I question like what's reviewable and what's not. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that's maybe something that uh, the league has to look into. And I almost wonder if you make everything reviewable. Well, like, I think that's kind of the what they tried to do a couple years ago when they made pass interference calls mm-hmm. reviewable, but that was that was a mess, and they never figured that out. But then out of that mm-hmm. came the the eye in the sky, which yep. I feel like that has made things better. I don't know. A little bit. I, I think they genuinely tried to do the right thing, and they try to do their best to be able to make the correct calls, even if they have to go to some eye in the sky in New York. I think um, the eye in the sky has made things more efficient so it's not like five minutes and both teams Mm -hmm. are like oh i'm not even sweating anymore like are we going to continue playing football what's going on there's one guy looking in this thing you know (laughs) that it's it's sped things up so that they can get back to playing the game regardless of what the call is but it's still not perfect and i think technology has advanced so Mm -hmm. much it's 2024 for pete's sake like i feel like they could they could put stuff in the ball they could put a chip in the ball they could um you know put cameras in a million different places and have eyes everywhere that would make it like without a doubt this is a catch or it's not this is a first down or it's not this is a touchdown or it's not absolutely so and i think the league has always erred on the side of making sure it's a human making these calls Um, because like I just spent a few minutes saying the refs more often than not make the right call or at least close enough to the right call and I think you do need to have that human element it can't just be all and I'm not saying this is what you're advocating for it can't just be a digitized everything with only cameras and AI and computer chips and trackers just making every call um there's got to be a human element somewhere Uh, but i think that eye in the sky thing kind of because for years we would say stuff like watching it on tv like how can we see it plain as day with the nbc broadcast or whatever but the refs are still making the opposite call and i think the eye in the sky type deal is one thing they did to try to say you know what you're right if you can see it on tv it should be a common sense thing yep another thing you're seeing the last handful of years those extra pylons the like end zone type pylons you're seeing that at like the first down down like and that's huge that's super cool one because like a lot of times this tv can you know we actually see the broadcast of Mm -hmm. that camera two like that's just another tool to help referees like for years i remember thinking why couldn't they put two cameras down the goal line just to be able to see if the ball broke the plane and they kind of have that now which is cool so overall i think referees are doing good things to make the game better i think the game this this weekend was a little rough for the referees fortunately we're saying that after a vikings win and we're not blaming the refs for blowing a vikings win so so would you say that the officiating was a thorn for you it, if we're going to transition into roses and thorns here for the game it definitely could be i had written down a thorn but i think it was the obvious thorn which we'll absolutely be talking about um but yeah i mean just the referees they're still human like i said we want to keep that human element in the game but humans aren't perfect so you're still going to see the occasional rough day i mean even sam darnold will probably have a knock on wood rough day at some point this season but he hasn't uh, but yeah, the refs are probably one of my bigger thorns. Well, I would say, and you've got it here on our notes, um, the second half collapse was rough, but I'll get a little more specific with mine. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it was it was the play calling. Uh, I think both offensively and defensively, the play calling got really soft, especially in the third quarter when they kind of seemed like they put things on cruise control. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know if that's Kevin O'Connell leading that. I don't know if Flores just kind of did his own thing on the defensive side of the ball and was like, man, we're up by a lot. Let's just play a shell coverage and see what happens. Let the ball come to us kind of thing. But all of a sudden, the Packers were moving the ball, and the Vikings couldn't do anything. It were it was uh, on the offensive side of the ball. It was, uh, I think it was like something like punt, turnover, punt, yeah. punt, turnover, or something like that. Which we've seen a couple of times already this season like a hot start and then a slump yep 
And then usually the, they, you know, right the ship a little bit towards the end of the game. But yeah, it's not the first time we've seen that. Yeah. And to drill down even more specifically into that, the defense I think is fine. I, I do think Brian Flores just kind of laid back a little bit knowing that there's what, uh, a lot of games left, yeah. <laughs> 13 games left in the season, mm-hmm. knowing that like, okay, I don't have to, you know, push these guys to the limit on every play. I don't have to call all these exotic blitzes and risk injury. We can, we can take a little bit of a, a step back and I'm not justifying it necessarily, yeah, yeah. but I'm saying like, maybe that was the game plan. Sure. But on the offensive side of the ball to nitpick a little bit, there were obvious communication issues between Kevin O'Connell and Sam Darnold. There were multiple delay of games. There were multiple plays where Sam just looked like a deer in the headlights mm-hmm. and just chucked it into the dirt right away. And we've seen this happen now over the course of the last several games. It, this is not the first time it's happened. And so for me, that's the specific thorn that they've got to figure out if they want to beat the best teams in the league. And if they want to make a deep run in the playoffs, because yeah. you, you can't have those moments where you have a delay of game because coach and quarterback aren't on the same page. You can't have those, oh, I just dumped it down because we didn't read the defense right and they came through the middle and I know I had no time to do anything, mm-hmm. right? Like you've got to fix those things if you're going to be a playoff caliber team. Yeah, in absolutely. My yeah, there were like two straight plays or it may, it fe- at least felt like two straight plays where one was obviously supposed to be a run up the middle and or it was either supposed to be a run up the middle you know where Sam Darnold just took the snap turn around and handed the ball off or it was supposed to be like a run kind of sweep you know outside run to the right um, the problem is Sam Darnold played the run up the middle, turned around, and tried to hand the ball off. Whereas Aaron Jones played the, the run to the right and he went wide. And within half a second, you just knew the second Sam Darnold turned around and tried to hand the ball. He knew like, Oh, broken play. Yep. And he just kind of tried to not lose as many yards as he could and just got down, which in a panic situation, that's not the worst thing to do. Cause he could have like tried to like, dance around and so then do a nick mullins yeah. and throw it to <laughs> throw hero ball or even get injured because yeah. the protection's not where it should be on the desperation thing he was doing and then i think it was either like the next play after or soon after there was another one where as soon as the ball was snapped sam must have had a quick read and either he didn't know the the route tree uh, the receiver's route running well enough on that play or assumed something that was wrong or the receiver that was supposed to run a certain route ran a different one. And the whole play was up and same thing. It was a broken play. It just looked like he was giving up on it. So he threw it right in the dirt, which again, could have been way worse. He could have tried to Michael Vick it and run around and play hero ball and try to, you know, throw it into one tight area and who knows interception some kind of a fumble injury you know like at least the quick like oh crap we just need to mitigate all all losses here and try again the next play but it's that's communication we we did see some good things out of sam darnold he can run the football we saw that Mm -hmm. Um, i think he got at least one first down with his feet which was awesome to see Mm -hmm. and he's not afraid to just tuck it and run and see what he can get, which is awesome. We also saw something we haven't seen in the first three games of the season um, in this fourth game against the Packers where he, he would throw it away rather than trying to force it and throw Mm -hmm. an interception. We still saw that. (laughs) We still (laughs) saw him try to force it. There was one that was nearly picked off and he was fortunate that it wasn't, Mm -hmm. but I think he's starting to figure it out and he's starting to realize, okay, when the play is broken, when it's about to be a coverage sack downfield, I just got to throw it out of bounds yep. and live to fight another down. Cause I know my head coach, he's going to put the right play in my ear and we're going to keep moving the ball. Yeah. And they've proven that as a team. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I texted you at one point, it was early on. And I said, Sam quote, Michael Vick unquote <laughs> Darnold. Um, cause he, he did, he ran for a first down or something like that. Uh, but I think that the idea that, and you hate to see it, you hate to see a quick throw away or a broken play that just feels like a total lost opportunity, but that I'm, and we're not 
on the team. We don't know their conversations. That could be coaching. That could be better communication because maybe that is KOC saying, hey, you know what? I don't care if it's third and 15. If, you know, if the play happens a certain way, if things break down a certain way, just get out of it because it's much better to either try to convert a fourth and 15 or punt it away than it is to throw an interception or get injured because nobody knows what they're doing and somebody gets blasted, you know. So that that very well could be a situation where KOC is just saying, hey, I'm teaching you just do this. If it's breaking up, just live to see another play. Total guess. Maybe it is. Maybe KOC is just sitting there like, you idiot, what are you doing? <laughs> well, there was definitely a moment, and I texted you this. Uh, he, Kevin O'Connell looked frustrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it might have been one of those delayed games or something where he's just like, we, we, we had it. It was right there. And I don't know. There, there are, There's definitely some stuff that needs to be worked out. I, th I think Kevin O'Connell and Sam Darnold have a really good working relationship already. I mm -hmm. don't think they would be 4-0 and if it was this like cold shoulder Mike Zimmer, Kirk Cousins type of relationship <laughs> yeah. where they don't even talk to each other. I don't think that would be possible with a 4-0 and start. I, I think they've got a great relationship and I think they will figure it out and I think they'll continue to gel and we won't see these issues. That's my prediction. We won't see these issues in the middle and the later part of the season. Yeah, every year we say teams in week 15 are not the same team they were in week two. Uh, and that's why these guys mesh and gel and the whole team just figures out a little bit more every day how to play with each other. And that is the sign of a good team if they get better. That means the right things are happening, the right conversations are happening, people are listening and learning, and it's a good thing. Um, but all that to say, I feel like we've we've complained enough. <laughs> yeah, we need to transition to the positive now. Yeah. We, we've allowed these thorns to prick us in the side a yeah. little too much. But the best part, maybe, and this isn't my rose, but it could be, is that there's a lot to complain about, but they're four and zero, and nothing that we're complaining about is anything that is impossible to overcome. It's not like we're sitting here saying, "Well, yeah, we won, but our starting quarterback just blew his Achilles, so now we're on to Nick Mullins for the rest of the like." Everything that we're complaining about can be fixed with coaching, or fixed with a few conversations. Um, or with, like, TJ Hawkinson coming back from injury. Exactly. Or, which could happen this week, I yeah. think. And we kind of saw, because I said a few weeks ago, like, there is the possibility, I'm not predicting this, but there's a possibility where, I don't care who it is, if it's a Hall of Famer, if you add something different into a team that's already working well, could kind of mess up the, the mojo. Um, but we just saw Jordan Addison come back after most of the season being gone. He was... He played the first, what, half of the Giants game. Um, essentially, he's been out all season. He came back, and it was only good for the team. I mean, he had a rushing and receiving touchdown. Like, yeah. And looked good. He was a positive injection for the team, uh, which makes me think all the more that once TJ Hawkinson comes back, and at this point, I don't even care when he comes back. We don't need to rush him. No. Let him nope. be 100% and not a second before that. And even if that was to say, like, for some crazy reason, he misses the whole season. Like, things are working okay. Josh Oliver got his fifth receiving touchdown of his career just this past week. Like, there, there are options at tight end. Johnny Munt got a touchdown, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's like an Oprah episode. You get a touchdown, and you get a touchdown. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but all that to say, like, this, this team, the bad stuff – you could see a route to where it's easily or, you know, it's workable, it's fixable, they can improve. Uh, the good stuff, obviously, it's already working. We're not seeing, they're not 4-0 because of 10 lucky plays a game. Like They're actually good. Like, Sam Darnold isn't just Nick Mullinsing it down the field and getting lucky every throw. You could argue that one touchdown to Justin Jefferson was kind of lucky because it just dropped in his bread basket but that's also a ballsy play yeah. to, oh, yeah. to throw that ball and for jj just to sorry justin jefferson just to like let it come to him and then have the muscle to like complete the catch that's not a luck play that's a ballsy play that 
that that that's why I feel so good about this team. That play in particular impressed me because Justin Jefferson was able to corral the ball up against his chest and then just manhandle. Mm-hmm. I don't even know who the defender was. Yeah, doesn't uh, it matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he made a fool of the guy because he just pushed him out of the way and said, "Get out of here." Mm-hmm. And that was awesome. And he knew it too because oh yeah, Jets was fired up after that like obviously he just scored an nfl touchdown who wouldn't be fired up but he was like he hit i think i saw it i wish i would have remembered who tweeted it but they tweeted the video of the catch and then the gritty and they said that gritty was personal like oh, yeah. he he did that gritty with some some authority <laughs> like it's not just a quick little like oh yeah we're all having fun and dancing around like he perfected that gritty right there so We've, I think we've been circling around this, but what's your rose? All right, officially my rose, and I guess I've kind of said it already, is that this team is good. They, they've they shown their last three wins are against previous playoff teams and teams that aren't looking like garbage this year. You know, they could be looking better, but they're not looking like garbage. They can, they can go against anybody in the league, and they can beat anybody in the league. And as long as they don't have another second half, you know, collapse like they did against the Packers, they should beat everybody. Yeah, agreed. And they've proven it. So that's that's definitely my rose. Yeah, I would say the rose for me was that first half. And that's it's the obvious answer. It's the gimme answer. But I don't you, you don't get much better. Like I, I found myself I was sitting on my couch in the basement just like. I love this team. Mm -hmm. This team is so much fun to watch. I said that out loud. I'm just like, I'm down here by myself, just like hooting and hollering every time something good happens. And yeah, it was so much fun to watch. It was so much fun to watch Sam Darnold just dominate, find the open guy. It was fun to watch the defense take the ball away Mm -hmm. and make fools of the Packers offense, which by the way, I would like to point out too, because we didn't really talk about it, but Everybody was talking about Jordan Love and how he wasn't 100%. Mm -hmm. It was pretty clear and obvious to me in the first half that he was struggling. Yeah. But, man, once he got warmed up, that dude balled out. He played a heck of a game. Yeah, they figured something out that worked for the whole Packers team. I mean, we're, we're not delirious. They... I think I even said if the Vikings, if the football games were 62 minutes long, the Vikings might have lost that game. You yeah. know, um, the Packers are a good team, but I mean, not to rain on the first part of your point. Yeah, their Packers are good. Jordan Love, for a while, I was like, man, they, they need to take him out. He doesn't look yeah, good. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. I was thinking, like, man, they should just put Malik Willis back in and mm-hmm. roll with that because that seemed to work better in the two games that he started for them. But. I don't know. That first half was so much fun to watch. It was so fun that I kind of like distracted <laughs> myself. I, you know, as a teacher, started grading some stuff while I was watching, and mm-hmm. I wasn't like fully invested anymore because I'm like, yeah, we're up twenty-eight, nothing. Not a true fan. I can, I, I, oh, I guess. I don't I'm know. a true fan. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I should have. I don't mean to. I just took a shot of apple cider vinegar because because you were wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> true fans don't do that. That's true. That's true. But anyways, it was a fun game to watch. I'm glad they won. It was definitely stressful at the end. Um, you you pointed out something to me, and this could maybe be how we kind of wrap up. Um, Bill Belichick was quoted this week mm-hmm. saying, the Vikings will have to learn how to play from behind if they're going to be successful this year. And that's an interesting point because the Vikings have only played from behind for like four minutes or yeah, something not crazy even like three that. three something. And that was like the first... It was in the, the first Giants quarter of the Giants game. Goal, yeah. yeah, they were up three nothing. And then from then on, the Vikings have led in every minute of every game that they've played. Or at least not trailed because, you know... The, yeah, because yeah. zero zero tie. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and that's that's the mark of a good team. But you would like to see that well-roundedness to know, like, oh crap, if the other team does get up two touchdowns, to know, like, all right, they're capable of of turning this around and ultimately winning the game. I will say, and probably my last point of the Packer game, I loved when everybody in the world who was watching that game expected the Vikings late in the game, in in the middle of this desperation thing, trying to close the game out and seal the victory, they had a drive where they probably old school should have just tried to run off as much clock as possible 
and they made they passed like five straight times. One of them being a 17 yard completion to Justin Jefferson, um, which because it worked kind of jacks you up and it makes you like love this team and love KOC. Um, but it also shows that they've got, he's got trust in Sam Darnold and Jefferson and all the players on that team to be able to still use the passing game to ice, ice the other team out. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And that was probably the drive of the game. Honestly, was that late fourth quarter drive where they should have run the ball, but they didn't. Well, and I think, my the way I'll 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 kind of wrap this up is Kevin O'Connell. I think either on Monday or today. No, today's Monday. Today is Monday. Today was a really long day. <laughs> it felt like two days. Um, either in his post game presser or today, mm-hmm. then because uh, he has a press conference every Monday too. He was quoted saying something along the lines of this win this win means absolutely nothing. We got to get back to work. We've got to fix the things that we've got to fix. And I think he's fully aware of the things that they need to fix. And I'm confident that he will fix those things Mm -hmm. and that he will continue to kind of sharpen both ends of the sword. And this this Vikings team could be really dangerous down the stretch. If they stay healthy, it's going to be fun to watch. It's kind of scary to think. I need to knock on wood for that one. Um, Yeah, it's scary to think because... The, the running joke on Paul Allen's radio show for years, you know, leading up to the first game of the season for the Vikings every year has been like, I'm looking at this schedule and I can't see the first loss. I can't find it anywhere. And I mean, we could play that game now. When, when is the first Vikings loss? Because they're not going undefeated probably. But like, I don't know. They might go nine or ten games before they lose. Like, Or they could lose in London next week. You know, you never know. Well, before we get to that game, we should maybe finish this beer. Yeah. And give our kind of final thoughts on it, and then let's crack this other one open and pour well, that up. You're the amber guy. You're the the red guy. This is your category of choice. What are what are your full thoughts after one full Rooster Tails Red Ale? Well, I just finished it, and I finished it before you, and I think that means that I like it a lot. It was really good. I also talk a lot, so I give you plenty of opportunity to drink because I just like to hear my own voice every <laughs> once in a while. No, I like this beer a lot. It's it's balanced. Um, my first, like, right off the top was maltiness. Like, I could just taste the maltiness, and mm-hmm. perhaps that was the contrast of the apple cider vinegar. Oh, maybe. <laughs> still coming off of that, but I don't know. Uh, I still taste the maltiness. It's still there, but I, I taste the, kind of the tanginess a little bit, kind of more of like, a, like an ale, um, which mm-hmm. makes sense because it's a red ale. Um, but... All in all, it's very easy drinking, very smooth. It's delightful. Yeah. I would have it again. I Everything you just said, I'll also add, it's got like really good flavor, but for four and a half percent, it's got more flavor than you would expect. Usually I picture a four and a half percenter and those are your, you know, your Coors Lights, your, your Bush Lights, your Bud Lights. The, this red ale, it's got a full flavor to it. It's not a light beer in any way. And maybe it's a plus. I usually knock down beers that are that lower content. But if you are having a night where you want to have a couple, but you don't want to wake up and feel like garbage the next day, this is a good option, especially in the fall with that red yeah. and amber flavor. It'd be a great one to have like around a fire oh, yeah. or like you're just sitting in the backyard watching the sunset. The leaves are falling. It's a good painted better. Keep good going. Keep going. Is there a, a babbling creek? There could be. Going yeah, by? there could be a little babbling brook in the background. Is it like a little foggy you're a little wearing, bit from? Yeah, the, yeah, you're wearing your flannel. Somebody and your whipped jeans. out a guitar. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that's a good beer at four and a half percent. Did you see what this other one is? Yeah, this one's gonna balance it out pretty good. <laughs> So that that was the Rooster Tails Red Ale. It it gets the Skull Hop stamp of approval. Thank you, Titanka, for providing this one. Uh, genuinely, it's a it's a really good beer, and so far one for one. Like I said, um, and I promise, if it was garbage, I would I would say it's not the greatest. But it is good. I can't say it's not great because it is. Thank you. And we appreciate the free beer. So thank you again, Jeff <laughs> from Titanka. Um, all right. Well, we've got another one here. Middle of nowhere. New England IPA. Which is kind of funny because you could argue that Titanka is in the middle of nowhere. It kind of is. Yeah, <laughs> we, we didn't know where it was and we, we looked it up. It's uh, nor- north central Iowa, mm-hmm. 
west of Clear Lake a little bit, immediately south of Blue Earth, Minnesota, which is where uh, the Jolly Green Giant Interesting. Green Bean Factory is. So, okay. fun fact, if you're driving on I-90, you'll come across Blue Earth. Hmm. And uh, actually, oh, this is embarrassing because I don't remember their name, but we met them. Uh, we met one of the guys from the podcast. Uh, oh, no. We should look that up really quick. Yep, I'm going to look it up. Um, we met him, we met him in Cedar Rapids um, at Lion Bridge Brewery. I remember this now. Now we got to find a their name. Golf podcast. Yeah, and we're gonna mention them <laughs> once we find them. Uh, but uh, the guy was from Blue Earth, and I was like, "Hey, I know where Blue Earth is." Okay, so there you go. Um, anywho, public golf course or public, public course golf. I'm public sorry, guys. Course golf. Yeah, that, that is it right there. <laughs> yeah, I was wearing that shirt that you're wearing tonight. And he thought I was on the skull line. He thought oh, I was on the drum line <laughs> for the for the Vikings. And That'd be I was cool, like, man. no, actually, we're a podcast. And we ended up talking, and we gave his son one of our stickers. Yep, and yep. <laughs> so there you go. Anyways, yeah, probably not too far from Blue Earth is Titanka Brewing. Nice. Uh, Titanka is in Iowa. It is an Iowa brewery. Yes. So, And I really hope, I usually, uh, this says brewed and packed in Titanka, Iowa. Okay. I just, you know, sometimes breweries, they, they, they have their cans packed somewhere else. But I'd venture to say they probably do all of the, the canning themselves on I th- location. I think, I mean, we can crack these open. Yeah. But I think as we do that, we might have a location to visit on our next brew hop maybe, tour next summer. Maybe keep an eye out. So, yeah, like we just said, this is the middle of nowhere uh, New England IPA, any IPA. Um, so we did a, a red ale, amber. That's your wheelhouse. Yep. I like them too, but you're definitely the more of an amber guy. Now we're going to the IPAs. I this just is licked straight. my fingers after cracking this open. You're gonna like this one oh, a lot. Oh, okay. It's really good. Do I need to also lick your fingers? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. You can lick your. I had to. Yeah, this kind of. Uh, so we'll swap on me this a one bit. out for that here. I think this is the first time we've featured two different beers on the Squall Hop. We've done it before, but only because you and I have been in different locations. Yes. Drinking different beers on our own. But this so, is the first time where we've both had the same beers and tried two different beers. And we need to double check that, too. Maybe like episode one or two. I'm kind of thinking there might be another one oh, that we did Oh, you're right. Too. There was one. But I think in that episode... I think we did a, like, you tried A, I tried sure. B, okay. and then we flip-flopped yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Still a first. Still a first. If not forever, then for a long time that we've done two beers. And so I'm excited. This is definitely a New England IPA. It's very hazy. It's, mm. it's got that citrusy aroma. I cannot see through this at nope. all. There is there is no seeing through this. Oh, man. I could I'm be so wrong. I'm so excited. I could be wrong, but Citra Hops, it's that, a, it that would like. make sense. I don't know if they say it on their can. Uh, we can look and let everybody know later. Citra is my favorite, so if that isn't there, then this is guaranteed. Either way, just off the look, the smell, the everything, I, I know I'm going to love this. So let's give it a try. Skull. Skull. In the football mm-hmm. mugs, too. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Jeff, I'm going to need, like a case or two or 10 of these this is fantastic i love hazy ipas i love new england ipas if i could only have one kind of alcohol ever and i had to pick it it would be a hazy ipa new england ipa this oh my gosh this is delicious i love this so much if you hate ipas don't waste your time because this is such a good ipa that people that hate them there's no saving grace you have to love hops you have to love hazy ipas if you do man you're you're in for a treat this is delicious it's definitely got that like that danky flavor uh that are kind of uh characteristic of beers like this um it's juicy too it's it's delicious i like it a lot this is this is right smack dab it reminds me of all of my favorite beers it's I don't know. It's delicious. I, I wish I had better describing words, um, but I don't. I just, I'm almost speechless. This is amazing. There you go. And I'm excited to very quickly drink the rest of this. <laughs> well, we can take our time. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to 
chug it here. That's true. I, I, I don't want to disrespect it by chugging you, but man, I like it a lot. Jeff, I may be reaching out to you and just seeing you about, about how to how I can pay for uh, a personal shipment of these beers because that's delicious. Well, let's look ahead. <laughs> Vikings. <laughs> While we drink this awesome beer that we were provided by Titanka, we're mm-hmm. very grateful for that. Um, also, um, this uh, it's hard to knock a good beer, but maybe we should have done this in reverse order because this green here looks an awful lot like jet green. This is more jet green than even Packer green. Yeah, it, it's it, that. It's so, okay. The, the beer itself is not green. The beer makes up for it. Um, <laughs> but anyways, the Vikings are playing the Jets. The Vikings are hosting, quote unquote, Yeah, it's technically Jets a home game for the purple. In London. Is it at, which stadium is it at? Wembley I, or Tottenham? I'll, I'll look it up really quick. I believe I it's in remember. Tottenham. Anyways, um, while you're looking that up, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets looked bad against the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. And the Denver Broncos looked bad as well, but the the Broncos snuck out with a win. Which is crazy, because I think I saw something that there was some, like, NFL record for Bo Nix was the first quarterback to win after having, like, less than two yards per completion or something crazy like that. I don't know. I didn't watch that game. Uh, I didn't either. I've heard the weather wasn't great, which kind of excuse me, kind of uh, added to the Jets not being able to do anything, but oh well, like everybody faces weather at some point. So I don't know. I, I, I do know Aaron Rodgers has a tendency to pout if things aren't going his way. Um, it already kind of seems really? like he, he does that. I know. Right? <laughs> Although no. the crappy thing is, at least for a long time, when Aaron Rodgers pouted, one of two things happened. He either totally collapsed or seemed like every time against the vikings he like turned into some crazy maniacal superman and threw for ten thousand yards and pulled something out of his butt and won the game so i hope that doesn't happen (laughs) i i hope he pouts and totally collapses again that would be great um but yeah judging by the way the this last game just seeing the box score i'm not too afraid of the jets i'm more afraid of the travel and the coming off of a bad second half for the Vikings. That's what I'm afraid of. And the hype of playing in the London game and mm-hmm. all that. And granted, that's not as uh, it's not as big of a deal as it used to be because there used to only really be one or two international games a year and yeah, they've expanded that. it out mm-hmm. to quite a few. So it's at Tottenham. Is yes. that what I'm seeing? Yeah, and Tottenham's the one that I, I think the NFL, either they themselves built – or the NFL some, has some kind of ownership. They at least had a hand in I think the construction of that stadium a handful of years ago. I think it's the preferred stadium. If you're an NFL team visiting London, I yeah. think you'd rather play at Tottenham than uh, uh, Wembley. Is it? Although, and that's not to say Wembley's a garbage arena. I think no. it's a kind of historically great but, arena. But for American football specifically. I think Wembley was built for soccer. Yeah, obviously, yeah. I think Tottenham, like you've said, and I guess I didn't even know that until you said it, but it sounds like Tottenham was built maybe with football in mind. Yeah. Maybe more soccer, but with football in mind. There's something, I don't know if it's like the NFL as a whole has some kind of ownership, or if it's something like as simple as the the Jaguars owner has some kind of ownership. There's some official partnership other than just the NFL plays a few games there every year. That's like an official business partnership. And like I said, there was also some decision making by the NFL on how that arena was constructed. So it's going to be a little bit more geared towards being more well, well well-rounded. Obviously they play soccer there, but if we've got any experts out there, feel free to drop a comment and educate us. We'd like to know if, uh, if there's any knowledge to be learned about how Tottenham was built. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Although I do think, and you talk about playing surfaces all the time in football, specifically for American football in London, and players have had a tendency not to outright complain about like the, the field turf there, which I think both stadiums have natural grass. Um, but that is the stadium, the Vikings will be playing in the same stadium that Lewis Seen had his horrific injury a few years ago. Mm. And, um, That's which, a good point. And it's not just because of the field surface why he got injured, but it's still something to think about. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, they're traveling to London. It's going to be obviously an odd game for both teams. Um, 
the travel alone is crazy. The adjustment yeah. to a different time zone, the jet lag, all that is a lot to overcome. The jet lag, jet lag, the the <laughs> skull lag. I was just gonna say, hopefully, it's a lag of jets, like yeah. lack lack of jet. Right, I see it's terrible. I've I had, see where you're going I've had for. too many of these middle of nowheres here, and I'm only halfway <laughs> into my first one. So I see where you're going with that one, and I like it actually. That, that makes sense. Um, anyways, thanks for humoring me. I appreciate. it. <laughs> no, I, I think these international games uh, they 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 take a lot out of an organization. Mm-hmm. It, it takes a lot for your support staff to plan like your equipment staff your operations staff they've got to figure out how to get gear onto an airplane not a bus Uh, i guess they're they're flying in in the u.s but like to get it over to a different country go through customs all that that's Mm -hmm. that's a lot and then um yeah you're playing on a a surface that's not built for football necessarily that's different Mm -hmm. um your body isn't used to being awake at the same time uh there's different food different uh stuff available to you over there stuff that like you could walk down the store to a walgreens or a cvs and get whatever you need here and you might not get that in london mm-hmm. you know you just don't know so um all of that to say um it's an adjustment for both teams and i think the better coached team will win yeah. on sunday morning and i at this point Yes, we 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 drink the purple Kool Aid. We are Vikings homers, but I don't think there's any question which team is better coached at this point. Um, overall, on the field, off the field, everything like that, I think the Vikings are miles ahead of the Jets right now, um, as proven by the fact that the head coach and Aaron Rodgers, uh, Robert Sala, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Sala, yep. Sala, Sala. They they have had like public arguments on the field and they try to laugh them off but i don't know it reminds me of kirk it's cousins grabbing fine. mike zimmer and yelling at him you know um so i think the jets of all the teams the vikings could play i think the jets are a good choice i just like i said i'm more concerned about the logistics um i think we we would see tj hawkinson back earlier than we will because they're playing in london not that he would have played in this week's game if it wasn't in london but i think it just delays it a little bit longer um yeah i I just think that's going to be more of a hurdle on top of the idea that the vikings just kind of s the bed in the second half of their most recent game i think that's it's going to be more mental more internal for the vikings um than facing the jets yeah and i think kevin o'connell in his presser, again, it wasn't Tuesday. It was either <laughs> after the game yesterday or yeah. today. I looked at a lot of stuff. I watched a lot of uh, footage. But um, I, I think he set the stage well for his team, too. This win means nothing. Is it huge to get a divisional win? Yeah, mm-hmm. let's celebrate that in the locker room and maybe on the bus ride home. But from then on, we got to get back to work. Mm-hmm. And we, we've got a lot of stuff to clean up and... We played a miserable second half of football where we nearly lost a 28-point lead. Mm-hmm. Like, we we have a lot to figure out. And the Jets might be looking at that thinking like, all right, this is how we bounce back. This is a trap game for the Vikings. Let's take advantage of it. <laughs> it's crazy to think that this year the Vikings have any trap games. Like, that's... Right. And, and I don't necessarily think that way, but I think the Jets could be thinking that way. I agree with you. I think it could bit. be looked at as a trap game. Yeah, for sure. So keys to victory, what do you think? What are what do the Vikings need to make sure to do? I think the Kevin O'Connell led Vikings have proven that if they score first, they're more likely to win. So I think they need to score first mm-hmm. or score early at the very least. It's tough to control who gets the ball first. You never know yeah. how the coin flip's going to go. And even if you win the coin flip, you may opt to kick it first and take the ball in the second half which is typically what teams do so um it's not necessarily score first but i think it's score early Mm -hmm. and i think it's score often because that was the key to the victory against the packers right Mm -hmm. it was 
who was scoring early and often, if they would not have built up that 28-point lead, if they would have had a few duds of drives where they went three and out and punted, Mm -hmm. they would have lost that game because the Packers would have roared back in the second half and it would have been 29-24 to or something instead of 31-29. So I think you've got to score early and score often, and I'm stealing one of yours because it's important. (laughs) They have to win the turnover battle. They mm-hmm. have to. Like, or at least tie it. They've got to tie it or win it. They won it. I think it was... Uh, they. Yeah, I think they ultimately won it against by the Packers. By one. Yeah. Um, the Vikings only turned it over three times, and the Packers turned it over four. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to me, until the Vikings lose a game and do those things, mm-hmm. that's the key to the victory. Score first or score early and often like they did mm-hmm. against the Packers and win the turnover battle. They do those two things. It's basically kryptonite to the other team. The Vikings are going to win. Yeah. Yeah, there's two important things that have seemed to have proven themselves out for Kevin O'Connell as the Vikings head coach. You hit the nail on the head. The turnover battle. Every time he has, and every Vikings fan has heard this stat for the last week or two or year that every time Kevin O'Connell wins or ties the turnover battle, he wins. He's 21 and 0 as the Vikings head coach with that stat. Another very important thing is Kevin O'Connell. I think he's like 20 or 21 and eight. Um, when his starting quarterback is healthy, that's huge. That's important. That means that he his leading up his game plan leading up his communication with that qb is very important and not that the quarterback is the only one doing anything but it's no secret quarterback is the most important position in football maybe in all sports so when kevin o'connell has his guy healthy and (laughs) they win the turnover battle as a team the Vikings are basically unstoppable. Kevin O'Connell is basically unstoppable as a coach. So those are the very important things. For sure. Interestingly enough, um, the coin is the only one to correctly predict the Vikings record to this point. Interesting. Of all of the picks that we made preseason. Mm -hmm. So we flipped the coin infamously. (laughs) Still have it right here. Yep. And, it was not. It wasn't the football mugs. It was the the bigger mugs. So. But yeah, we got the we we got the quarter that went into the beer. Might be you know starting to rust a little with the beer. <laughs> Who knows? But anyways, um, of all the picks that we made, the coin, you, your wife, your kids, me, my wife, my kids, um, the coin is the only one to be perfect mm-hmm. so far. Everyone else. Uh, this is interesting to me as well. Everyone else either predicted one and three or two and two at this point. So we're all at least two games behind. And we had both predicted a one and three yeah. record Yep. as of right now, as correct? Of, no, you picked two and two. You oh, had them okay. winning the Giants and the Packers, but losing to the Niners and the Texans. Okay. I had them losing all three of those. I had. I think we all kind of figured they'd beat the, the Giants, which they did. Yeah. And I had them losing to the Niners, Texans, and Packers. Hmm. I have them winning against the Jets. Okay. What and do you I think? also, well, I know preseason I had him winning. Uh, but I are guess. Are you sticking with that pick? My official guess. I'll give a score too. Um, even with <laughs> the things that scare me, the travel, the the recent scare, uh, which I think ultimately will be a good thing because it's something to work on. It feels like a loss without actually having to lose. Um, even with all that, I think the Vikings are going to win handedly. And it's going to be a thirty-five to twenty game for the Vikings. Wow! Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fifteen point win. The, and that is factoring both the Vikings being good and the Jets kind of collapsing a little bit. So that's that's my official prediction. I tried to talk myself out of it. I'm trying to say stop, stop predicting wins, Austin. Stop feeling like they're going to you know go and do the whole thing because they're not going to do it. We're Vikings fans. They've never done it. We joked about it before we recorded 2016 when they started 5-0. and We could have been saying the same thing. It feels like a very similar team to 2016. And it didn't happen that year. They went 8-8 eight and eight overall and missed the playoffs. So I'm trying to tell myself, calm down. It's not going to work out. They There's might make the playoffs, but no. But Pretty significant can't. difference, though, between the 2024 Vikings and the 2016 Vikings. And that's not that they... 
It's that they. Sorry, mm-hmm. I said that came out wrong. <laughs> this seven percenter man. Hey, yeah, I know you're only halfway in. Um, it's because Sam Darnold has been around basically through all of training camp and stuff. Mm, that's like he true. Was there for OTA, it wasn't this desperation move because in 2016 it was, oh crap, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, his knee just stopped being a knee. It just like. <laughs> ceased to exist anymore it's, it got thanos snapped is yeah. what it happened is gone. I, I would love to know the actual details we we're gonna talk to a guy later this week that might have some unofficial information i'm just guessing because he's more connected than i am but, than we are but anyways um. <laughs> the, the 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 ending to that story is they went out and say, signed sam bradford and and sam played well he he set at the time, uh, he broke the NFL record for completion percentage. Yeah. It has since been broken, but at the time, it was still really good, 70-something percent. And it was a good signing mm-hmm. by Rick Spielman to go out and get the guy. Um, and unfortunately, the rest of the team didn't play as well yeah. as maybe you would have hoped. Um, and then if, that let, led to the 17 season, which surprisingly, <laughs> Sam Bradford's knee decided to do something similar. Yeah, it just... That was weird. And then Knee Case, soreness. Case Keenum takes over and we Plays go to the NFC ball. Championship game. Case Keenum is the definition of hero ball. He just threw it up and didn't care, and it just ended up working for most of the season. That was a lot of fun. But I will say 2016, it was also different because those first five games, the defense was on a historic run of scoring and turnovers and and doing things that both led to wins and were unsustainable. You can't you can't bank on your defense scoring a touchdown or two every game. Um, and if that's the way you're winning, it's not going to last very long because that that's not sustainable. You can have a good defense, but you can't consistently have a high-powered scoring defense. And I think this year's Vikings defense, the 2024 Vikings defense, isn't that. They're not like fluky oh you scored a bunch of touchdowns and and won your team some games Mm -hmm. they have turned the ball over they have forced some key stops on third and fourth down and they've given the ball back to the offense to do the job of the offense Mm -hmm. right like uh yeah they've they've had a few splashy moments and i think we've had a few defensive touchdowns which is great but I think that's a key difference, too. The defense is playing its role. The defense is doing its job. Brian Flores has these guys primed and ready to go out every week to make the opposing team's offense job difficult. Mm -hmm. They've turned the ball over quite a bit, and they've put the ball back in the hands of Kevin O'Connell and the offense to go score points. Yep. And that's how we've won games in these first four games. So... Yeah, I I definitely like our chances too. Yeah, but I I think my score prediction is lower. Again, I'm just going to continue to side with the defense here. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's not that I don't have faith in the offense. It's just that the defense has played so stinking good. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what happened in the third quarter and the fourth quarter specifically against the Packers. I think it was more that the Packers figured something out, unless mm-hmm. the Vikings didn't know what was going on um but i think it's low scoring the packers did the packers even score not the packers aaron Rodgers. i keep <laughs> thinking the packers the jets did the jets even score a touchdown we can look i know it, it was, was 10 to 9 yep um i don't think he's i don't think they scored a touchdown i think they kicked three field goals if i'm not mistaken but correct me please if i'm wrong you All got right. it right here no uh oh that's the broncos um doesn't look like any touchdowns so three field goals for the jets yeah three out of four attempts okay so with that information my my official score prediction is 20 to 10 okay i think the field gives the vikings offense some fits I think the travel gives the Vikings offense some fits, but the defense figures it out. They allow one touchdown, 20 to 10. Okay. Vikings over the Jets. Sorry, I'm 
I'm just a little distracted because we have the Monday night games, which is so dumb. There should only be one Monday night game, but tonight there's two. Uh, we have both of them going on in front of us right now, and there seemed to have been a decent injury to one of the players in the Seahawks Lions game. Um, and you know me, it sounds and like a football TikTok. injuries. I like to film low quality videos and talk over them so people can see slow mo how the injury happened. Uh, but it didn't look like it was too bad of an injury. So I, I apologize for being distracted the last few minutes. Right. <laughs> Geno Smith was definitely under duress there. Yeah, and I think they're looking at it to see if he got the ball off or if it was a sack. Uh, it looks like the Lions are going to end up winning. Um, but which well, is there's still a quarter left. It's 35 to 20 at the yeah. end of the third quarter. The Lions are looking pretty high powered. This is not a Lions podcast, but it is the Vikings, and they're in the in the NFC North. Um, who knows? Maybe the Seahawks. I'm rooting for the Seahawks to win tonight because any division rival losing is a good thing. Oh, for sure. Uh, even if it means the Seahawks continue to be a fellow undefeated team for at least another week. Well, I think I said this before we started officially recording, but December 22nd. Yeah. Vikings at Seahawks. Yeah, which is always, they're never in Minnesota. It's going to be it a seems game. like every year the Vikings play the Seahawks, and it's always in Seattle, and it's really annoying. Well, circle that one on your calendar, because I think that's going to be a that's going to be a phenomenal game to watch. Mm-hmm. Even though Seattle's losing by 15 right now to the Lions with 15 minutes of football to play. Yep. Um, I don't know. Seattle's a good football team. They've kind of figured it out. Mm-hmm. And Geno Smith has kind of resurrected his career a little bit. He's got DK Metcalf and a few other weapons around him to to make stuff happen. The defense is looking pretty stout. Not tonight because they've allowed <laughs> 35 points. But... Hey, that game, I think that could be a, like, NFC playoff seeding type of thing because I think that's what, like, week 13 or 14? It's it's near the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. So circle that one on your calendars uh, and buckle up because that's going to be a good one, I think. So I, th- I think we've talked, talked the Packer game. We've kind of previewed the Jet game. Um, I've got one question for you that's not on our outline here. Are you ready for some football? Uh, always. That's not the question, though. <laughs> okay. This uh, You're going to know exactly what I'm getting at the second I ask this question, and you might roll your eyes, and this might get us nowhere. <laughs> but let's play pretend and say that the phone rings, and you're, you're Quasi, and the phone rings, and it's a magic phone. The call is coming from any team you want offering a swap one for one swap of starting quarterbacks sam darnold for anyone in the league right now starting quarterback in the league right now who who would you take let's because this is theoretically any other team who would you take and we can go down the list and I can tell you when I would stop. Does that make sense? Do I do I have to pick? So I, you just say right now, like, because there's one obvious answer, like, instantly, yes, we make that one-for-one one trade right away. Are you inferring Patrick Mahomes? I'm saying Pat Mahomes. Instantly, we would trade one-for-one. One. Contract even, for contract, everything. I don't even know that I would do that. Whoa. I don't, I don't know that I would do it. All right, explain it. Because I don't know that there's chemistry there i think i like the chemistry that sam darnold and kevin o'connell have i'm blown away right now i I don't i don't care how good patrick mahomes is okay he's he well well, one he's a drama queen we all know that and he's a proven winner though he he he's a good football player he's a really good football player and i think he works really well in andy Reid's system and and i'll even just admit because i'm a coach myself Mm -hmm. andy Reid has in some ways, kind of a hands-off approach to the offense, like it's what it, it what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll call the plays, and he'll. I mean, he's he's a pretty pretty smart offensive dude, but like he he puts a lot of control in the hands of Patrick Mahomes and the rest of the offense. Like mm-hmm. he's, it's widely known that he lets them draw up their own plays and we saw like oh, yeah, that's true, some yeah. of these weird like all right we're gonna do this weird circle dance in the <laughs> huddle and then we're gonna go out and you know do this and we've seen patrick mahomes do the weird like shovel pass thing and 
Did the Seahawks just the score? The Seahawks that? just scored a touchdown. Oh, all right. Anyways. All right. Okay. So you're you're on Let me finish. Let okay. me finish. Um <laughs> So I, 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 I appreciate the open handedness as a head coach and not the like micromanaging, I'm going to do everything for you and you just go out there and do what I tell you to do kind of thing. I, I can appreciate mm-hmm. that as a, as a coach because that's in some ways how I try to coach. I, I try to put control in my athletes' hands and let them go out and perform and let them do what I am confident they can do. Sure. Um, all of that to say, I don't know that that's how... Kevin O'Connell operates as a head coach. And I don't know that Patrick Mahomes and Kevin O'Connell would work well together. I think we would see a lot of this Mike Zimmer, Kirk Cousins <laughs> type of thing. I think we would see a lot of the Robert Sala, Aaron Rodgers type of tension that can exist and we've seen exist between head coach and starting quarterback. I love the dynamic right now okay. between Sam Darnold and Kevin O'Connell. And I think it's so underrated and I think it's so underappreciated in the league that like there, I don't know that there's a player or a dollar amount or anything for me. If I'm in Kwesi Adofa Menza's office yeah, and I magical. have his job and I have his phone, I don't know that there's really any scenario that I make any changes right now. And to be clear, this was a totally make-believe question where it's not Quasi making the call, trying to do everything he can. Oh, it's me. It's the other team calling Quasi saying, we need Sam Darnold, and we just need oh, a one-for-one okay. swap. My question was, who would it need to be? And, like, who who wouldn't you do that swap for? Okay. Well, that changes it a little okay, bit. Okay, okay, okay. I guess. Maybe like, I didn't explain myself well enough. I, I was thinking, like, I'm on the Viking side. Like, th- things are, we're 4-0. Okay. Things are rolling. Because, like, obviously, I would say no to anything. if Kwesi was trying to call and trade Darnold for Mahomes, obviously that would that would include multiple, multiple, multiple first-round picks. The answer might, no matter what, be no, which it should be as far as the, the – chiefs are concerned but this was the hypothetical who would you take over sam darnold really is what i'm asking Uh, and i still i don't know i still kind of hold to like i don't know that i would take anybody anybody for for the the purpose of chemistry okay um i don't know it's it's a tough question i mean joe burrow perhaps josh allen perhaps lamar jackson i'm i'm saying ever anybody Okay. Uh, one for one. I would anybody. say if I had to pick. Uh, not that you have to pick. You don't have to pick. The answer could be nobody. I still, I'm going to still say nobody. But if there were a scenario where a decision had to be made and there was no other option, like you can't say no, then I, it would probably be Josh Allen. Oh, uh, okay. I, I think he's proven to be the best quarterback. I think. Uh, getting a guy like Stefan Diggs off of that team in Buffalo mm. has really opened things up. Buffalo looks scary. Yeah. They look good. Yeah. Even and though, didn't they just lose? They lost yeah, yesterday. But, still. Um, but they look like a really good football team. And I think getting, uh, it's it's a stretch, I think, to say a cancerous player. Um, but getting getting a difficult personality out of your locker room opens things up i don't think it's much of a stretch as far as stefan diggs is concerned i think you could accurately call him put him in the category of locker room cancer okay (laughs) not to belong this anyway let's kind of switch the question up a little bit this is for not just the rest of the season but for the future anybody would you trade uh, sam darnold for anybody I don't think so. What about I, what about JJ McCarthy? Well, I would say, and I think you've you've stirred the pot a little <laughs> bit with some of our social media accounts on this yeah. topic already, and I like that. I'm okay with stirring the pot a little yeah. bit. I, I'll do it from time to time. I would like to see the Vikings bring Sam Darnold back after this season. Mm-hmm. I think he's already proven through four games that he's worthy of another contract, even if it's just another year. Like another one year, what was it, ten million this year? That's not what it would be, but But let's let's say it's one year fifteen million. Like, I think you're looking at at least double that. I think you if, think thirty? If it gets to the point that you're fighting to keep Sam Darnold, it means he had a great year, he won a playoff game or two or 
the unthinkable, I think the the number starts at 30. Well, I think the good news for the Vikings <clears throat> is the cap hits of uh, – Daniil Hunter and Kirk Cousins will be completely off the books next year, Mm -hmm. which I think opens up a ton of cap space. And I'm certainly not a cap expert, but I think you could maybe afford to keep Sam Darnold, keep J.J. McCarthy, keep Justin Jefferson, keep Christian Derrissaw, keep T.J. Hawkins, and keep... I I, I don't know that you have to really get rid of anybody. anybody, yeah. Um, I think you keep Sam Darnold. I think you continue this draft and develop mentality that the Packers have proven is super effective Mm -hmm. with the quarterbacks for the last 40 years (laughs) of their existence as a franchise. Um, I don't think you rush J.J. McCarthy into service. I also don't think you rush to market and try to sell J.J. McCarthy for whatever you can get him. I, I think you keep him. I think you tell him, hey, man, we're glad you're healthy again. We want you QB2. Competition. Yep. It's the way she goes. And we want you to, like, you saw how successful this can be with Sam Darnold last year. We think we can be even better yeah. with you. Like, I think that you're, you're telling J.J. McCarthy that in, in those back hallway conversations. Like, Sam's killing it right now. Mm-hmm. But we drafted you for a reason. And just keep keep your nose to the grindstone let's go let's do this thing and let's go let's do what the chiefs have done with patrick mahomes let's do what you know you know fill in the team has done over the course of history in the nfl let's let's do a little dynasty thing here I agree, and I, I'm definitely in the the mindset right now of not don't sign him right now. I know on social media I've kind of stirred the pot saying that right now and trade J.J. McCarthy. I obviously don't believe that. I'm just looking for likes and comments. <laughs> um, but I, I do think if things keep trending the way they are right now, you got to try to keep Sam Darnold. And one thing that helps the Vikings is Sam Darnold kind of needs the Vikings or KOC as much as the Vikings would, in theory, need a very good Sam Darnold. It's a a win-win, for sure. Yeah. Outside of of Shanahan last season, Darnold hasn't had a good situation. And he's never had a good situation as the starter. So you you could argue that Sam Darnold would be incentivized to stay in Minnesota, even if... It meant he took a little bit of a discount, but even in that situation, the discount would mean thirty million rather than forty million a year, something like that. Hopefully, we get to argue about this in January, February. That'd be great. I but, hope it's more like February, March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's all a moot point if things go south starting this week against the Jets. Well, we got to start there. Mm-hmm. We got to start with that game, and we got to keep things rolling. Uh, you hope that the Vikings can do that against the Jets for sure. And then after that, you get a week off, which is helpful uh, for the team. No, not they go Jets, and then did I miss some? I think I just totally missed over what you said. It's Jets, and then Lions, and then a week off. No, no? Jets by week, Lions. Interesting. Okay, you're going to that game, aren't you? I am. Yeah. So you're right. I, yeah. I thought they didn't have. I think it was last time they went to London. They didn't have the bye. Yeah. Jets. Yep. Bye. Okay. Lions. You're right. I'm sorry. So, I'm the idiot. It's Where's my dunce hat? It's all good. <laughs> we'll just make you take a shot of apple cider vinegar. It's really good for you. Did you know that? Yeah. It'll make. It'll <laughs> limber up my joints. It might make bit. me sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, it should be a good game. I'm excited to watch it. Um, I might have to watch it like in retrospect because it's like prime church time yeah yeah i'm gonna be out of town returning home from the land of darkness of wisconsin this weekend um and driving home during the game so i'll either be watching it on my phone in the car or i might just maybe we should just plan to get together and watch the game behind after the in in the afternoon yeah yeah yeah. we'll figure it out we'll figure it out (laughs) but anyways uh should be a good game regardless hopefully the vikings can pull it out and we could roll into the bye week with a 5-0 and Vikings team. Knock on wood. That would be a lot of fun. Um, we had some great beer tonight. Yeah, I kind of... I don't have anything to skull. I drank it too fast. Titanka, this middle of nowhere is freaking delicious. It's good. I like... it. It's up there for me. Like, I've had one, and I can already say... I could say after one sip, it's up there. This is... And maybe it's me. Maybe I'm simple and easily pleased, but as far as New England IPAs goes... 
I don't know. This is hard to beat for me. This do you, was delicious. Do you need to get one more and just but the, uh, that was it? That's it all, that's all we had. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, we have more Titanka beer. We do, but we need to. We need we'll to save that. Maybe next week. Maybe the we'll week after. That. We got some Keg Creek beer as yep. well in yep. there. So. Um, but we, hey, we filled up the school hot fridge. We're ready for like <laughs> probably two or three weeks. Yeah. Titanka, if you ever want to send any more, also, I will be reaching out because I will want to purchase my own uh, case or more of this middle of nowhere. It's delicious. And so I guess that's what I have to say about it. What do you think? Well, yes. Uh, great. Uh, of course, I'm going to gravitate more toward the Rooster Red. That was a fantastic beer. Love it. <laughs> I would, I would have more than you would have of the middle of nowhere because i could probably stomach a few more because it's four and a half percent not seven and a half percent but uh both were really good definitely we need to put that on the list of places to visit oh 100 percent. summer of 2025 if we can make it i don't know the exact drive time but yeah absolutely just off beer alone i'm i'm I think ready we'll, to go i think we can figure it out and i think uh one of the breweries that was on our list that we didn't get to this year is in that area okay so we can we can make that work we can do more of a like a northern iowa tour of iowa breweries yeah anyways um yeah definitely check them out uh if you can find it i don't know do they distribute anywhere i, th- I think jeff was saying they're not just distributing a whole ton right now but i gotta believe if you reach out to them and just say you're interested, they'd figure out how to make that happen. I'm literally about to go through that process right now and figure out how I can get something shipped. Uh, I know shipping alcohol can get a little hairy. I don't know the exact rules, but they're they're really good. They should be available everywhere. Um, yeah, I like them. Well, and maybe we can update people next week on oh, yeah. how that went for you. Mm-hmm. But anyways, Titanka Brewery, uh, we love your beer. We're very, very grateful that you sent us several and we're excited to try some more in the not too distant future yeah so. hey if uh people wanted to reach out to us the way jeff from titanka did how how would they go about that i would say go to the big top ta- not top big <laughs> big time big time these seven percenters oh, man, man. <laughs> they really they really get you in the words we've got a website <laughs> <laughs> go to the go to the big time social media sites is yes, what i was trying you. to say we're so uh, used to saying big top, big yes, top, big top, big, big top. time, social media. Thanks we're to everywhere. Big Top for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> uh, no, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're on all of those. Mm-hmm. Um, those are probably the biggest ones that we're primarily on all the time and would see a notification or a message from. But you can email us at theschoolhop at gmail.com. We have a website, theschoolhop.com. Yeah, you can find everything from our website. And if nothing else, just Google the Skull Hop. Yes. Uh, and you'll find us there. Yeah. Well, oh, did did you see somebody bought another shirt? Yeah. From There's going to be site? another one of these Skull Hop shirts. Yeah. So you remember a couple weeks ago we said, hey, did you buy another shirt? Because a couple weeks ago somebody bought a shirt. Yeah. I figured out who that was. Oh, yeah. Brian. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Brian bought a shirt. He bought a red one, though. It's this in red. It almost well, looks like a chief shirt the way it's printed off. He annoying. likes it, though. All right. Um, but then after that, like a couple of days ago, somebody bought a shirt, and I don't know who it was. So no, it was today. Today? It was today. Uh, if yes. it was you, let us know, because that's super cool. I'm super jacked about that. Yeah. We only get like a dollar. But I don't care. We could get zero dollars. Like That's, that's cool. super cool to know that somebody's got one of our Skull Hop shirts. That's pretty awesome. We appreciate it, and we appreciate the support. Um, we appreciate the free beer from yeah. Tatanka, and we'll definitely be having more soon. Absolutely. And... We're definitely going to be talking about hopefully what happened a, a in the win Jets against game. The, a win against the Jets. A win against the Jets. Let's because who has to spin the wheel if if the oh, Vikings well, lose? Does anybody have to spin the wheel? Um, if the Vikings lose, we both have to spin the wheel because we both picked them to win. Everybody picked the Vikings to win this week against the Jets. The coin, you, me, our wives, our kids. It's a win All across right. the board. On well, let's let's hope we don't have to spin the wheel next time. <laughs> skull. All right, skull. Hey, 
Hey Vikings fans, Evan here from the Skull Hop, and we just wanted to say thank you again so much for listening to the Skull Hop, and we also wanted to take one more opportunity to let you know that this episode of the Skull Hop has been brought to you by Big Top Ventures. If you're considering taking an all-inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica, reach out to our friends at Big Top Ventures at BigTopVenturesLLC at gmail.com. Once again, that's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. You can get the lowest rate possible on several all inclusive resorts throughout the region. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. And thanks again for listening to the Skull Hop. Skull. <laughs>